We see we have one viewer. Let me just have a look and see how to work this. Right, so I'm going to crack on. Um, my name's Emma, and today I am going to be showing you how to do a hair, a male hair replacement. Um, hi, Dom. Um, I have my lovely client, Luke, who is with us today. Um, I've been doing Luke's hair for a while now, and he has come in for a new hair placement. So I've just, I, I have prepped Luke this morning when he came in. Um, so I'm going to show you little snippets of the hair replacement instead of you watching the whole thing through. So Luke actually at the moment has his old topper on and I have actually cleaned off all the glue and washed Luke's hair this morning but I just wanted to pop it back on just to kind of show you um, the kind of finished result with a haircut because Luke is, after this appointment, Luke is actually going to a barber's where he has all his skin fades done and everything. So today I'll just be kind of cutting the hair piece so it looks decent for him to walk down the road. But yeah, this is kind of the finished result. And you've had this hair piece for six months, have you? So these hair pieces do last around three to six months. It does depend on how much product your client puts in it. You don't really need too much product, but a lot of clients do like to wear gels and waxes. Um, but the more the more you use, the more it is going to fade out and the hair is going to fall out. Let me just show you. So, this is what a male hair replacement looks like. And this is, as I say, the old one. I don't know if you can see through this filming, but this scalp is absolutely see-through. So you can see my hand underneath it, which makes it look realistic. So we're going to bin this one today, Luke, and put on a new one. I just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like before I cut it out. I have already prepped Luke and I've already cut out his new hair replacement to put on. This is what one looks like. They really are realistic. This is what one looks like when you first get it. So this one here has 10% greys added in because we can get as realistic as we want with our male clients. Um, obviously, females love to dye their hair, but a lot of males don't like to really dye their hair. So we need to put the greys in with the natural hair so it doesn't look too unrealistic for anyone. So it looks really scary when it comes, and a lot of my clients are first impressions, oh my God. And they're very, very big so that we can custom the size that we need to cut for our clients. So Luke's head, can you just put, pop your head down for me, Luke, forward? So Luke has quite a big area to put a hair placement on. Some clients have a smaller area. It, it really does depend, which is why it is so big to start with. So we custom make the size that we need to cover, which is where the template comes in, which I have already done. I've done Luke's hair for a long time now. So each time when they first come in, I give them a template. I then keep the template. So as you can see, it says front, it says Luke's name, and it says bottom, so I don't get confused with what way I'm doing it. Um, it's really handy to keep it because as time goes on, you can also see how much hair they have lost and if it's grown back or not. So this is Luke's template, and I measured it all up earlier. And from when I first did Luke's hair, I'm just going to spin you around, Luke. So when I first did Luke's hair to now, you can see that he has receded a bit further than where he originally started. So it's a good it's a good idea to do these templates so you can keep an eye on this. Not that you can do anything about it. Right, so template done. Hair piece cut out, all ready to go. Before I do any of this, I will measure up Luke. Now, I have already done this. Can you look straight at the camera a minute, Luke? 
So I always ask my male clients to raise their eyebrows for me when they first come in. So can you do that for me, Luke? So as you can see, Luke has the frown line just here. We cannot go below that frown line for the hairline. Because if we do, as soon as they start doing expression, then their hairpiece is going to lift up. So that's a really important thing to consider before you even put the hairpiece on. You find the natural hairline, but as I say, it finds where that last frown line is so that you don't go over it. So we're going to be starting Luke's hairpiece here today. Um, I've already marked it out slightly, but we will also, before we start, just go all the way around and just get any small little bits of hair off, which I will quickly do now. Now, as I say, I have prepped a small in because I don't want to bore everyone with the whole appointment. So once we have done that, we will just blast off the hair and I have given Luke's, Luke a little hospital in. The glue can get really, really messy, guys. Um, I'm not going to lie, it can smell and it can get really, really messy. Um, I have found an amazing tape remover that actually gets all the residue off the hair and the scalp, and it is Luxbox tape remover extensions. It is probably the best thing I've ever used in my life and it smells of coconut so it can disguise the smell as well. Right, once we have done that, we are all ready to go. You ready for this? I'm going to start with my scalp protector. I use Walker's tape products if I can. If I run out, I use Ghost Bond glue which is just as effective as the walker tape. I find that the hair lasts for about four weeks before it's sit down. Sometimes more, it really does depend on whether your client works out a lot or whether they sweat a lot. Like there's all different factors when it comes to this. So I'm gonna put the scalp protector on first. This is just to protect the scalp from any rashes or sores or when we put the glue on so it doesn't irritate the scalp. Also, guys, please remember, when you have a new client come in, always do your patch test with the glue, just to make sure that they're not allergic to it. Once the scalp protector's on, we're going to give it just a couple of seconds just to dry in, where they're going to use the glue. Now, we're going to bring this closer so you can look. Now we're going to go two layers on the head and one layer on the hairpiece. I always start with putting the layer on the hairpiece because then I can let it dry naturally and then I can work on the head. So let me just hold this up for a second. We're literally going to just dot round the whole area. And then I use a spatula, so it's rubber, and it is really, really easy to just spread on. Guys, I can see that people are posting comments, but I can't actually see the comments right now as I'm doing this. So in a second, I will have a look and see what is being said. This is my first live, so please bear with. I was just saying to someone yesterday that technology really is not my thing. But we live in a world where we need it, so I really must learn it. So we're just doing a really thin layer of glue. And this always reminds me of back when I was in primary school when 
we use to make the paper mache. You put the PVA glue on and just let it dry. And then you use to peel it off your fingers. Everyone remember that? So that's all smudged in. I'm going to leave that on the side for a second while I work on Luke's head. Now, depending on how close you are with the client, <laughs> you can do any kind of pattern that you wish, or you can just keep it to dots, which is what I am doing today to keep it professional. So once we've done the dots, in fact, I'm just going to spin you around, Luke, when I do this bit, just so you can see a bit more of what I'm doing. Once we've done the dots, we are going to smudge this in, but we are getting really close to the hairline, as close as you can get. Because this is where your topper is going to be stuck down. It's going to follow this hairline. And please don't be scared to use the glue. So I always ask my clients because I actually started my business as a hair extensionist. And I loved it so much. And I was the only person in the area doing it. And I just grew massive. Um, as in my business. And suddenly I just thought, well, there's a real niche line here that like no one's doing hair loss stuff. And you know, I'm going back five, six years ago now, and no one has heard of it, no one was doing it. So I put myself on a course um, for men's hair replacement. And it blew up, it blew up massively. Like so many people wanted it done to the point where I was a bit overwhelmed with it. So I kind of pulled back a bit because my bread and butter is hair extensions. I'm fully booked with it all day long. Um, but I did enjoy doing it and I enjoyed the difference of what it makes to people. You get a different kind of clientele. Um, so I then went into female hair replacement and again loved it. And then quite recently, well, a couple of years ago, I actually trained in sculpt pigmentation, um, which again, it is all based on hair loss clients. And I think in this day and age, we are actually seeing more and more people suffering with hair loss. The amount of people that comes into my salon and you wouldn't even think they had any hair loss problems until they whip their hair over. Um, I think it's a massive growing concern at the moment. Now, I'm no trichologist at all. Um, I am just a hairdresser. As I say, I've done my courses um, in hair replacement. Um, but there's a lot to it. And it's actually a really, really interesting field to go down if you do have the time because it is almost going into doctoring. I did a short course with Stephen Goldsworthy. Um, he is a trichologist and it's so interesting in how the hair works and how different things in our bodies can make hair fall out and you know like iron and there's, there's just so much to it and it's a really interesting field to get into but as I say if you've got time because the people I know that have done it it's a whole different ball game to hairdressing. So anyway, um, I'm just going to let this dry. So I'm going to give it a helping hand. I'm going to put it on a cool heat. And I'm just going to dry the hair, dry the glue into the salt so that it turns into the PVC kind of glue that you see when you're at school. Just shiny. So I was going back to what I was saying. <clears throat> so I never know what these feel like. I've never worn one. So I always ask my clients how it feels, if they like it, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the feedback I've got 
is when you first put these on, you can feel it. But within a day, it literally feels like your own hair. It's lightweight, you can't feel glue. Um, it's really, really... Well, what would you say, Luke? Can you give me a bit of input on how it feels, like, every day with your work and... You just, you just forget it, but you forget it's there. It's literally like your own hair. Yeah. And that's what we want, guys. We want, so we want people to feel like they're wearing natural hair. This system is amazing. It's probably one of the best things I've done. Um, I've been doing this for about five years now. Um, and as I say, it's becoming more and more popular as the years go on. And I think it should, because I think this is such an easy service to give to your clients that I think every single salon should offer it, to be honest. But I think I am one of the only ones down this area that does offer it. Right, so number two is going on. And I'm just going to try that in. While I'm doing that, I'm going to see if I can find these chats. What is the maintenance process? So these last for about four weeks until they have to be stuck back on again. Some of my clients buy their own glue and stick it back on as it is really, really simple. It's literally what I'm doing now. So you take off the old hairpiece, you peel off the old glue, and you wash the hairpiece, and then you just do exactly what I'm doing and put it back on again. This is every four weeks that you do this. As I say, some people can go longer. Some people is actually, it takes longer. Um, the hair costs for this. So I charge my clients really cheap because I brand my own hair and I cut out the middleman. And I think this is a really important factor to think about in your area of where you are. Um, I charge £300, but I've literally just gone up. I was charging £250. Now, for me, this is less than an hour's work, um, especially with returning clients, because you've already got the template, and all you've got to do is cut it out and stick it on. Um, so I'm still making good money from doing this. Um, if you buy it from a supplier in the UK or a brand of person then I know you can't do that because obviously they got to put their money on top but I, I am really reasonable and I am really cheap for what I do the hair does last up to six months um, but I've worked really hard on finding my good suppliers and trying out different hair and everything so you know you come and stuck along the way sometimes but I think I found a good brand now and as long as I can keep things low for my clients, I will. So guys, this is the um, really, really dodgy bit, because if you get it wrong, then you get it wrong. So, I was gonna do this another way, but I forgot, so I'm doing it the hard way, okay? So let's hope on my live, I don't bodge it up. I've not bodged it up before, so, touch wood. Right, so we're gonna roll this on. So we're going to put your fingers underneath and find your start. Can you see that okay? And you're literally Are you right there, Luke? Yep. And then, once it's on, you are going to massage that in. Now, sometimes you might get little tiny air bubbles. So you're literally going to massage them into the scope. Okay. 
and make sure it's all pressed down. Beautiful. So obviously this looks quite scary. So when you're not used to having this system and you look at yourself and you think, oh my God, what have I done? This does get cut. But I just want to show you, I'm just going to get a part in. Luke, can you do me a favour? Yeah. and get as close to that camera as you possibly can so people can see that hairline. What do you think, guys? Right, you come back now. Right, so once this is all down, this is where you can start cutting it. Now, as I say, I can't cut too much today because Luke has got a barber's appointment. So whenever he goes down to see Sam, I literally just cut off the end so he isn't walking through town looking like this. Um, and I don't want to take off too much either because I want the barber to be able to have more hair to play with than less hair because I'm not sure what cut he's going to give Luke today. But I know Luke usually has it all faded and something I can't do because I don't And nor do I want to do. So we're literally just going to cut off the ends. Now with hair replacement, you don't cut the hair how you would cut normal hair. So I always cut by eye and I do it with extensions as well. I always say with extensions or any hair replacement, you are doing a reverse haircut. So I am just literally taking off these ends. So that I'm leaving all this length here. But if you just turn to the side loop, can you see how even just by taking off the tiniest little bit, it's all blended in already? And that's before we've even given a proper haircut. Like, I, I think this system is life-changing. I think it makes people look at least 10 years younger. Um, I'm really proud to be able to offer this service to all my clients that come in. And some of them have gone on and have hair transplant and actually have their own hair now, but it has given them their confidence to do that. Is there any questions? I'm sure some of you have already written down some things, but Apologies, I can't see the chat coming up. So, as I'm looking now, does anyone have any questions? What training do you offer? So, during lockdown, I thought, I've been, I've been hairdressing for 20 years now, and I thought I was going to training. So, I did a course with ABT and qualified in teaching male hair replacement and female hair replacement. Um, but I've decided to just stick with the male hair replacement training for now, as my life is super, super busy. Um, I do a lot of hair shows and 
I'm an ambassador for Mood and on the Fellowship Extend, and I literally just work, 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 work. So I've decided to just offer male hair replacement at the moment. Um, it's a really nice little course that I do. Um, if I get groups big enough, then I can come to you, or you're welcome to come down to me. Um, and we have lots of fun, and I also like to train in a really simple manner. I think a lot of hairdressers use a lot of big words. And I think a lot of hairdressers are too embarrassed to actually ask what these big words mean. So I kind of keep it really simple so that every single person can understand it and there's no long big words and you don't feel like you're sat at school. It's a very hands-on um, learning experience. So if anyone does is interested in any training, then you can give me a message, um, becreativehair at gmail.com or on Facebook or Instagram, becreativehair, or of course on platform. Um, I'm always I'm always there to ask answer any questions or to give some advice or you know anything you want really. I think this is a great platform for hairdressers to communicate and to help each other out and to just learn. And I think learning is the best thing about this industry. We can never ever stop learning. Anyway, I am literally going to wrap this up now. I'm just going to take a little bit of this fringe. How is your barber wear? How are you wearing your fringe? Do you, yeah, does he wear it long? So if I just keep it like this for now, um, I'm going to wet it down again. Because as I say, I really don't want to take off more than what I need to, so that when he goes for his haircut, he can have a really cool, trendy look. So, I've kept it long, but guys, can you see the general idea Of achieving that perfect hairline. I think it's amazing and if you're not offering this already you need to be offering this to your clients. It's life-changing and as I say it's it's a good money maker if you charge the correct money and if you find the correct supplier. Anyway I'm gonna wrap this up. I have a client in probably about 15 minutes because I am actually open today um, and I don't want anyone walking in while I'm still live. Thank you so much for joining me on such an early Saturday morning. I guess a lot of you guys are already working on a Saturday. Um, but enjoy your weekend and I cannot wait for Platform to go live next week. Um, I'll catch up with you all soon. Have a good Saturday.